so you want to upgrade your radio in your Ford F-Series truck. Upgrading to an aftermarket radio is definitely a benefit as we can add features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We can get better sound quality, we can get outputs for aftermarket amplifiers, we can play lossless audio files, we can get navigation. There are a ton of features to add. Now the Ford F-Series of vehicles have many different audio system options and what you have will impact what parts you need in order to upgrade. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the right parts for the install that you have, including an important new radio feature that you need to make sure you get. I'm going to show you how to remove the old radio, how to make the wiring connections, how to properly program the new data interface, along with some cool customization options we could do, and more. What's going on guys, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. To get started, we have to make sure that we have the right parts. Not only the head unit, but we have to have the right integration parts because in today's latest vehicles, our radio needs to interface with the data signal of the vehicle. So to make sure we have the right parts, I like using show sponsor Crutchfield. Now I've used these guys for many years, long before I started the channel. They have great customer service, but what they also have is this here. This is the vehicle selector guide. If we click select your vehicle, we can put in our information here. So in my case, I have a 2020 Ford F-150 and you can see that there's all the different options here. I have the XL. We're installing a head unit, but there are different speaker options and other options for the audio system of the vehicle based on the body of the vehicle. But in this case, I'm doing a super crew cab. And you can see you also have the option to select whether or not it has a center channel speaker. This tells Crutchfield if your system is a premium system. It's also important to choose your stock screen size. After we've told Crutchfield all of this information, this is going to make it so that we can find exactly what we need for installing a radio. Now, when you're searching for a radio, you can of course pick the features that are important to you, but a feature that I definitely recommend looking out for, and we can sort for it right here if we go to general features, we want to look for the iData Link port. The reason that we want this feature, if we read this here, a receiver with this port works with the iData Link module, allowing you to retain important factory features in a wide variety of vehicles. Like I mentioned earlier, this is important because we want to retain the data connection to the F Series truck. Now from here, you can pick other features that are important to you. In my case, I definitely want wireless Android Auto. This narrows my selection down to this one Pioneer model. A side note, I actually picked up this head unit a couple of months ago, but as you can see, it is temporarily sold out. Right now in 2021, there is a chip shortage going on, but what is nice about Crutchfield is we can put in our email address if we do want to know when it's back in stock. Another really nice thing here is if we click see the installation gear you'll need, you can see what else we need to add to our cart in order to be able to install this radio. And they also have some notes for us here. We're going to have to use the factory radio's brackets in order to install this new radio. That's no big deal. And they have a nice reminder here of what I mentioned to you guys earlier. An iData Link ready car stereo is required to retain your vehicle's personalization settings menu. You can see they have all the parts that we're going to need. They have the fit kit along with the wire harnesses that are going to plug into the vehicle. They have the Maestro RR. This is the brain box that allows the radio to talk to the data signal of the vehicle. And then they have an antenna adapter. And the other really nice thing they're going to give us is the master sheet. More on this later. So I can easily click that button and add all of the gear to cart. Obviously, normally the radio would be there, but it's currently out of stock. But we do have all of our other integration pieces that are going to come in here along with our free set of directions. So I've place my order and the packages come, but I also want to keep an eye out for this email that I get from Crutchfield. This is going to give us all of the information for our install. So on this page, there's a couple of different things. We're going to see a summary of the gear that we picked up. We're going to get a link to the master sheet, and we're also going to get a link to the wiring guide. The master sheet gives us step-by-step -step directions on how to remove all the speakers out of the vehicle, how to remove the head unit itself, how to do basically everything associated with the car audio system. Once we open up the package here, we're gonna have multiple different wiring harnesses that come with the radio and the different interface modules. And it can get kind of confusing reading the directions and trying to figure out which wires connect to which. So what Crutchfield has done is they've made this wiring guide that tells us the colors of each wire from each of the different harnesses and what needs to be connected to each other. This makes the whole connection process of the installation a lot more simple. 
They even go as far as telling us the unused wires on each of the different modules and the head unit itself. There's nothing worse than connecting everything and then seeing that there's a couple of wires not connected and kind of wondering if they should be connected. So by checking this out, we know that everything is good to go. So let's open this up and see what we've got. Get these peanuts out of the way here. Crutchfield includes their support manual, which gives us quick access to the different phone numbers for tech support and customer support. Next up, we have the head unit. You can see here's the DMH W4660NEX Pioneer head unit. This has the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. We've got the iDatalink Maestro RR. This is the radio replacement interface, which allows the head unit to talk to the data signal on the vehicle. And then we've got the MFT-1. So this is our fit kit for the radio, which will actually hold it into the dash. And this also gives us our harnesses that will allow us to plug into the different connectors in the vehicle and adapt our new radio along with an antenna adapter. What I like to do to stay organized is I keep the boxes in a row here and I open up each one and put all the associated gear in front of each box. That way we're not mixing up any of the different wiring harnesses. Now, depending on the head unit, we're going to get several different head unit specific connections. In this case, I have a GPS antenna, a USB extension, and a separate microphone to pick up the Bluetooth hands-free phone calls along with voice prompts. But what we want to focus on is the head unit's installation harnesses here that are going to connect to our other harnesses that are part of the kit. So we've got those, we've got all the wiring harnesses that are part of the kit, and then we've got the wiring harnesses for the Maestro RR, the integration brain. You can see there are several different bracket pieces that we're going to need to use here to hold the radio into the dash. I wanna see how that all comes together. So rather than making our wiring connections right now, I want to remove the factory radio from the vehicle. So this is where the master sheet comes in handy. First of all, we know that we're doing a factory radio removal and a receiver install here. So I can see what tools I'm going to need. It looks like I need a seven millimeter socket and I'm going to need a panel tool. A quick reminder, if we do have a factory CD player, definitely good to start with removing the CD out of the slot. So pull that out of the slot, and then we're going to want to set the parking brake and disconnect the negative battery cable. The next step is we need to remove this area up above the radio, and they give us directions depending on if there is a center channel speaker there or if there isn't. And from here on out, I'm just going to continue following the master sheet, but I'll show you guys what I'm doing in the vehicle. I first pull this rubber pad up and out of the way and that exposes two different seven millimeter screws that I can then remove. Once those are removed this plastic piece has these three clips that are towards the front that we can carefully pry up and remove that whole piece. Even if your vehicle doesn't have a center channel speaker there'll be a wiring harness on the back side there that we'll have to remove. Next we're going to remove the radio trim bezel from the vehicle and this starts with removing the two seven millimeter screws that are up top. Now I wanted to give you guys a view of the backside here because it gives you a better idea where you need to pry. You have three panel clips up here that you're gonna pry away first from the top. So you're gonna work from the top down. You're then going to pry away these two clips and then the, finally the last two clips here. Depending on the vehicle, this panel has four different wiring harness connections that we need to disconnect. And if you don't do car audio all the time, this can be a little bit of a challenge, but for these bottom two harnesses, you're going to push your thumb onto this center tab and that will help release those harnesses. And then on these top two harnesses, these are both the same design. See this little tab right here on the side? You're going to get your fingernail in there or a small little pick tool and you're going to pull over on that lever. And if you look closely, you can see how that releases the top ones. Next, we have six different seven millimeter screws that are holding in the screen. We'll get those removed and out of the way. And again, this changes depending on the vehicle, but we have several wire harnesses that we need to disconnect. This USB style connection is self-explanatory. You just push with your thumb and the same for this antenna style connection. This connector is a little bit different. We have to push down on this tab here to release the lever. And once the lever is released, we can push it down like so and unplug the harness. If you have a CD player, it's going to be here. In this case, we have a radio module that we're going to remove as well. In this case, there's four seven millimeter screws. Now for my vehicle, I now have the radio and all associated components removed. In some trucks, there's a camera module attached to this bracket right here that you have to remove and relocate. In my case, I don't have that. And if you were doing a full depth radio, you would want to remove this metal bracket. There's a screw up here and a screw up here that you reach from underside of the dash. You disconnect those. And then there's also a screw here and here that you access from above. You remove that metal bracket out of the way. That way you have more mounting depth 
But in my case here, since I'm using this shallow mount unit, we don't need to worry about that. There's more than enough room for the unit and all of its wiring. Also, depending on the vehicle, sometimes there's a USB plug-in area similar to this, but usually it's over here that you'll also want to remove and replace. Now that we have everything completely out of the dash, we need to start piecing together our fit kit that's going to hold our new radio. I need to use these brackets attached to the factory screen, so I'm going to remove them by removing these torque screws. The integration kit comes with two different sets of brackets. In this case, I'm just going to discard set number one, and we're going to be using set number two. So here I have the right bracket and the left bracket. Every radio has a ton of different holes in the side of it that you can mount to for mounting flexibility in different vehicles. So what I find comes in handy is take the bracket and mount the plastic piece that comes with the kit to the bracket temporarily. This way when we line up the plastic panel with the front of the radio we can see exactly which holes we should use. So there we go, those brackets are nice and secured. Now we can take the factory brackets that we removed from the factory radio. These are usually stamped with the side that they correspond to just to help you out. And you wanna make sure that this peg right here, that's what locates into the dash. So you wanna make sure that it is facing backwards and we're going to line it up with these holes and mount it. So now that we have that assembly all together, we can do a quick little test fit here in the vehicle. And there we go, that's gonna look good. Now we can move on to the wiring phase. Now I know my friends, if you're new to car audio, all of these different wires and plugs can look pretty intimidating, but I'm gonna break it down and make it easy for you along with the help of the Crutchfield wire guide. So for our head unit, we're going to need the main harnesses that connect the head unit. So that's going to have our different speaker wire colors, which are usually the purple, the green, the white, and the gray, along with the power, which is going to be red, yellow, and the ground, which is going to be black. And then we're also going to need our RCA connections if we are connecting any external amplifiers, but we also need this harness in this case because this has one of the inputs for the reverse camera. From the MFT-1 kit, we're going to need this harness here. It has these speaker wire connectors on it. It's got two connections on this end. It's the main harness. We're gonna need that. And we're also going to need this harness here. This harness has that connector that I just mentioned that will give us the video signal for our reverse camera. Finally, from the Maestro RR package, we need the brain itself. We're going to need this little USB cable temporarily so that we can program the brain. And we're going to need these two cables here. One is a data connection that's gonna connect between the Maestro RR and our head unit. And the other one is an audio connection. These other wires are built into the MFT-1 kit, so we won't be needing them. You'll notice that these plugs here, these are just plug and play. They plug into the vehicle. The only connections that we need to make are going to be from the aftermarket head unit, the wiring harness from that, and our wiring harness from our kit. These leads here and here. This particular installation is pretty straightforward with the colors on each of these harnesses being the same and connecting together, but that is not always the case, and that's why it is nice to have this on some of those other installs. They do give us some helpful notes if there's anything unusual. In this case, you may have noticed it's kind of unusual that all the speaker wires here have an RCA connection. We're actually going to be just cutting these off for this application. Now, I'm gonna be soldering my connections, so I first strip back some of the insulation on my first wire that I'm going to connect and then I put a piece of heat shrink tubing over the wire. I can now find the two wires that I want to attach, twist the two together, and then I'm going to solder them. Once soldered, I put that heat shrink tube over the connection and shrink it down using a heat gun. So I repeated that process several times until all the wires on the harness were connected. You'll notice that from the factory, they use these little bundles of Tessa tape to secure the wiring harnesses together. I used some Tessa tape in order to make my own little bundles. That way, everything is nice and clean. Now that I have the harness all wired and ready to go, I now need to flash the the Maestro module. Now inside the box is a quick start guide and this gives us information on the website that we need to go to. I've got that website loaded up right here and we're going to go to flash my module. The website will direct us to the proper software to download and install on our computer and once installed we can plug in the Maestro using that included USB wire. Once detected we are going to select flash by vehicle. The Maestro can be used in several different makes and model of vehicle, so in our case we're going to pick our exact options for our vehicle. The module allows us to retain our steering wheel controls and sometimes there are different steering wheel versions, so we pick our version there and then we're going to pick our head unit model. 
In order for the devices to work properly, we need to get the serial number off the back of the head unit and we're going to put that into the software as well. This gives us the recommended firmware to use. We can verify that we're using the correct integration kit along with any add-on kits. If we're also installing a radar, we could tell the module here and we can finally move on to configuring our system. Now this is what's really cool about the Maestro module. There's going to be obvious functions that we wanna use on our steering wheel. Like obviously we want the volume up to be volume up, but we can also program these buttons to do different things if we would like to, or we can assign an option for holding each of these buttons. Check this out, underneath the radio there are also these added buttons. I can program those as well to do other functions. I'm going to make it so that pressing number three will display the climate screen. We'll have to test that out later. With everything now configured, we get this summary page just to double check everything and we can now click flash to flash the module. Flashing the module takes just a few moments and once it's done, it will let us know. So now I can start making all the connections. So first we're gonna take our main harness. This is the harness that we had to solder our connections and we're gonna plug that into the head unit. These two plugs are for inside the vehicle and the only other two plugs are these two here. These are going to plug into the Maestro. Green to green and then this connector for the power right next to it, black to black. Next, I'm going to plug in the head unit specific harness here with all the RCA wire connections. I like having these on hand to cover the connectors that I'm not going to be using and I am going to be leaving a lot of this kind of loose in the dash for the time being because I do plan to come back in and wire and amplifiers in the future. The connection that I do need to make on this harness right now is for this one here. This is the rear view camera in. So we're gonna take this harness that was with the MFT kit and we're going to take the backup camera lead and we're gonna plug these two together. If you can, it is a good idea to put larger heat shrink over this style of pigtail connections just to make sure they stay connected once in the vehicle and again to kind of protect that connection or you could use tape. So I'm gonna plug this into the back of the head unit and also part of this connection is another plug that needs to connect into our Maestro. You'll notice this connector says MRR2 only. We don't have the MRR2, so we're not going to use that. So I've plugged in on this side next to the red connection. Included with the Maestro was this cable that has a 3.5 millimeter jack on one end and then a three pin connection on the other end. That three pin connection plugs in right here on the module and then the other end is going to plug into our auxiliary input. And again, we will protect that connection. The final connection included with the Maestro is this four pin cable. One end plugs in right here on the Maestro and then the other end into our Maestro ready head unit on this data connection. Finally, we'll take our antenna adapter cable and we will plug this end into the head unit and the other end here is going to plug in once we're inside the truck. So overall, we essentially have four connections that we're going to make to the vehicle itself. Here's one and then the antenna, and then these two plugs here. As a reminder, depending on the head unit, you might also have some other connections you need to use, like a microphone or the GPS antenna. I'm gonna get those installed and have these ran to the place where the head unit will be as well. So now we connect each of those connections and carefully put all of the wiring back into the dash. Now the good thing here is there is plenty of room behind this dash to work with. I do recommend finding a mounting spot for the Maestro module. I like to take a little bit of the adhesive Velcro tape and put it on the back side and then stick it in place. That way, if I do need to remove the module, I just undo the Velcro. Like I mentioned before, we're definitely going to clean all this up once I do connect those amplifier signal wires, but it is always good to do a functionality check on everything, make sure everything is working good before we tidy everything up. I've double checked functionality so that we could get everything reinstalled back in place, and now here we are. We've got the head unit fully installed. First off, the wireless Android Auto works great. As you can see, my phone, it's not connected, completely wireless. I've noticed right when I turn on the vehicle, it connects perfectly, this is a super Super nice feature to have. Obviously Android Auto gives us navigation, but it also gives us access to Spotify and what other apps we have on our phone. Let's go to the Pioneer main screen so I could show you some other features. Remember how we mapped these buttons here to custom functions? Remember number three would pull up our climate controls? If we push that, you can see that that comes right up. Another common question that comes up, do the volume control knobs still work? Yes, they do. You can see that's impacting our volume right there. The climate control knobs, of course, still affect the climate control system. And what about our backup camera? Yes, that still works too. If we put the vehicle in reverse, it will work, or we could access it on demand by going to camera view. What about our steering wheel controls? If we press volume up, 
you can see that that works too. Now, because this head unit now communicates with the data signal of the vehicle, we can monitor things like the backup sensors. If we pull this screen up right here, we can also go to car features. Here we could set up custom gauges. We could see vehicle information, but I wanna show you guys something that I really like here. If you guys are familiar with this button, this is the auto start stop. And a lot of times when we get in the vehicle, we will turn this off right away. What's cool about having customization over these data options is now we can make it so that this stays turned off. In fact, when I first turned it off, a little menu popped up and it asked me if I'd like to save that setting and I clicked yes. But the other way we can access it is we can go to settings here. We could go down to OEM settings. And here we can see vehicle features and maestro features. In these menus here, that's where you're going to have access to the different menu settings that you had using the OEM head unit. As an example, we can modify the ambient lighting, we can change the door keypad code, and if we go into Maestro features, if we scroll up, here is where we're going to find that start-stop memory, we can turn it on or off. So in summary, not only do we retain all of the features of the factory vehicle, we are given some new ones, and we obviously have all the new functionality of the aftermarket head unit. So now with the new head unit installed, along with all those added features, I have a great foundation to start the rest of my system. I plan to install several amplifiers, upgrade all of the speakers, and custom fabricate a new subwoofer enclosure for underneath the rear seat. Definitely have some fun plans for this build, so if you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget, next time you are installing a system in any vehicle, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. The vehicle selector tool is great for determining exactly what parts you need, not only for radio upgrades, but also for speaker upgrades and other upgrades. Using their guide, I picked up these speaker adapters and wire harnesses as well that I can use to install the speakers. Learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans by using the link here on screen or down in the video description. There's some more related videos you can check out here on screen. As always guys, thanks for tuning in and watching.